As the premier organization of forensic science professionals, the American Academy of Forensic Sciences provides trustworthy, objective data that is relied upon by the judicial system, Congress, and the public. From criminologists to chemists, from pathologists to legal professionals, thousands are coming together in Colorado for AAFS 2024. Welcome back to Day 2 in Denver. I'm Molly Hendrickson, and this is the American Academy of Forensic Science Annual Meeting, and this is AAFS TV. Today we take a look ahead and abroad as we focus on our international work and the future of forensic science. Straight ahead, we'll hear about preparations well underway for the ISABS conference in Croatia. With only one goal, to fight the crime in every single point globally. Plus, we spotlight the newest section to the Academy, Forensic Nursing. I feel moved and called to be um, a servant of these patients. And it's Forensic Nursing that gets the attention today as we continue our tour of the organizations finding new ways to advance the forensic science field. We're packing a punch on the second day and we want to make sure you never miss a minute. You can find the latest AAFS TV episodes on the TV's place throughout the convention center, on channel 66 in your room at the Hyatt Regency, on the AAFS meeting homepage and the meeting app. And on our YouTube and X pages. We begin today abroad. The work of the AAFS is felt far beyond American borders. Here in studio now is International Affairs Committee Chair Sam Ibrahim to explain the collaboration among the forensic science communities abroad. Thank you so much for joining us. You're very welcome. So first, can you start with what the role of the International Affairs Committee is? Absolutely. Uh, so the role of our committee is to consider all things of an international nature, uh, and any taskings coming from the president of the AAFS. Now, I recognize that's hugely broad. That's how it's written. Um, but concretely, we do have some very particular tasks that we do. Uh, chief among them is the evaluation and recommendation of associate academies um, that will be uh, um, joint with the American Academy of Forensic Science. And currently we have three of those. So those three academies are joint with the American Academy of Forensic Science and they have attained the status of Associate Academy, uh, which has some rights and privileges with it. Uh, so the International Affairs Committee is the point of contact for these three organizations and also the point of contact to evaluate and recommend any other organizations that will be joint with us. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the key functions under that umbrella is to uh, encourage um, membership mm -hmm. in our academy and in their academies, uh, to encourage um, uh, attendees from both and presentations and uh, hopefully have more tangible outcomes like uh, increased collaboration and uh, increased research projects together. So that is on the whole uh, the main function of the International Affairs Committee. So. When you think of our mission, it would be to uh, bring the world to the American Academy of Forensic Science and have the American Academy of Forensic Science help uh, the AAFS go out into the world. We keep hearing that word collaboration a lot as we do these interviews. Obviously, it's very important. Yes, yeah, extremely important. I mean, one of the, uh, one of the key trends that we have seen uh, is that crime is not uh, typically isolated to one country. We have huge multinational uh, crime mm -hmm. and fraud uh, and so many forensic scientists work collaboratively around the world together in uh, different jurisdictions in multinational teams. Uh, so here at the Academy we, we like to think that we are a venue to bring people together uh, to make those collaborations. We've discussed standard implementation in the U.S. already, and we know that there's still more work to be done. What about internationally? Yes, standards <laughs> are uh, key. Standards are important to all forensic science uh, around the world. And here, of course, in the Academy, we have the Academy Standards Board, uh, and we encourage our international colleagues to, uh, to come and participate in this. And, of course, 
because we have such a huge cohort of international attendees. Uh, so for example, this year we have more than 450 international mm -hmm. attendees registered from over 60 countries, 65 I believe. Um, and you know, people make lifelong friends. There are a lot of uh, brand new, first time student international attendees. Uh, so to start putting people together uh, to learn, to learn their best practices, to learn the different ways they do things, to learn how their standards work, if they have standards, especially in jurisdictions where you have uh, a different justice system, a uh, different political climate, uh, you know, it's, it's really important for us to consider how this all mashes together and what the Academy can do to support this. So the IAC is one of those committees and venues where we, we try very hard to bring people together. And uh, this year in particular, we are hoping to focus horizontally across the um, Academy with some of the other um, committees that have an international presence or an international mandate. So the Human Rights Committee, for example, or the uh, International Outreach and membership, of course, uh, so that we can all work uh, together to, you know, collaborate, bring everybody together. <laughs> Lots to take into <laughs> consideration there. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sam. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Staying overseas, the upcoming International Society for Applied Biological Sciences Conference is coming up in June in Croatia. The president of ISABS, Professor Dragan Primaris, explains what we can learn at this year's exciting gathering. The uh, idea is to bring uh, knowledge to the society, forensic society worldwide, and collaboration with the American Academy of Forensic Science is something that naturally happened. Actually, International Society for Applied Biological Sciences is a sister academy of American Academy of Forensic Science. So with the joint forces, we are bringing knowledge to the forensic science community worldwide. Every other year, we are having gatherings in the Republic of Croatia, the president of American Academy of Forensic Science is coming, and we are having more than 600 participants for more than 70 countries worldwide. And what is the main concept is to bring the knowledge and latest technology for every single participant. That's exactly what we are doing with the joint forces. So what is really happening, we are having selected students, the best of the best worldwide, they are coming, and uh, we are having discussion with the Nobel Prize laureate. We are discussing all hot topics in science, the recent discoveries, the way where the science is going in the future. But also what is the concept? The young fellows are asking Nobel Prize laureates the most, I would say, comprehensive questions. What to do to become Nobel Prize laureate? What you would change in your life if you're coming 30, 40 years back? How you discover help humankind and so on? So that's exactly what is going to happen this year in Split. Many questions, great discussion, and four Nobel Prize laureates. But also what is very important, what we are planning to introduce is, uh, I would say, educational concept in every single level of the new generation of forensic scientists with only one goal, to fight the crime in every single point globally. now to the desperate need for sexual assault nurse examiners. The demand was so great in Indiana that the state started the Indiana SANE training project. While the program began at the University of Southern Indiana, the training and technical support for these critical nurses has expanded across the state. The Indiana SANE Training Project is a collaborative effort led by Southwest Indiana AHEC and the University of Southern Indiana. We work to help ensure that individuals who have been impacted by crime or trauma have access to medical forensic care. This is often through training medical personnel, such as nurses or advanced practice registered nurses to become what's called a sexual assault nurse examiner. We help provide their didactic training and we offer them clinical training and support. And then once they are operating independently and practicing within their facility, we also offer continuing education. And the people that are involved in the project who teach, are all very dedicated and committed, and those are the people that we need to continue supporting through this project so that we can have a real impact on the state.
To Wisconsin now, where the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee's School of Nursing launched its STARS program to bring sane nurses to the communities who need it most. By offering robust training in forensic skills, as well as identifying social determinants, STARS looks to mobilize their highly trained nurses across Wisconsin to bring attention to an overlooked health issue. For decades now, forensic nurses have been working toward transforming the way that healthcare is delivered to patients that have experienced violence. We found that there was a lack of sexual assault nurse examiners that were serving populations of color. The STAR program that is based at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee was founded for the reason of increasing the number of sexual assault nurse examiners in the state. I want all nurses to understand that all patients deserve compassionate, patient-focused care. So I'm hoping we're gonna increase our curriculum. We'll bring in more students. We'll hopefully precept those students into teaching and grow forensic nursing within the state of Wisconsin and throughout the United States. Keeping the focus on forensic nursing, it's the newest section in the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. Having long been a part of the general section, this discipline is now its own section, garnering the attention it deserves within the forensic science community. Sylvia Perez is here now with more on this most recent addition. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, happy to be here. So first of all, as we mentioned, it is the newest section. What does this mean to be recognized as a standalone section by the AAFS? Being recognized as the 12th section of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences is a milestone acknowledging evidence-based practice of forensic nursing science, as well as the health and welfare of the patients that the forensic nurses serve. What are some of the biggest challenges in forensic nursing? A couple of challenges in forensic nursing are the dissemination and the establishment of forensic nursing worldwide in response to human violence and human rights violation. Another challenge is support and collaboration with other disciplines. While the health and welfare of living victims is a priority, forensic nurses also balance the precision of evidence-based preservation, impacting the work of criminalists and the judicial process. So we know that one of the biggest challenges facing forensic nursing is the issue of rape kits and how they're processed. What steps are being taken to make sure that they are being tracked and processed correctly? Tracking rape kits has been a hurdle for the entire forensic science community. Forensic nursing supports and champions uh, tracking of rape kits to demonstrate accountability to sexual assault, survivors having the courage to come forward for care and evidence preservation. How pivotal do you think that forensic nursing is to the overall forensic science community? Forensic nursing provides trauma-informed, compassionate care, which establishes a bond of trust, prioritizing the health and welfare of victims of violence while empowering the survivors to choose to participate in the criminal justice process. Empowering survivors, really an important piece of yes. this. Um, yes. When you're talking about forensic nursing, what do you think one of the biggest misconceptions is? Oftentimes, forensic nursing assumed to be, is assumed to be for the post-mortem environment. Forensic nursing responds to living victims of crime, such as adult and pediatric sexual assault, el elderly maltreatment, um, interpersonal violence, um, stabbing victims, gunshot victims, even mass disasters. Forensic nursing also practices in the field of death investigation. Uh, so forensic nursing um, can be for those living and for those deceased. Another misconception is that the clinical forensic nurse is an agent of law enforcement. Forensic nursing cares for patients when there is a health and legal intersect. And for the forensic nurse, the patient's health is the priority. And I know that you have a, an interesting background. You have a background in, in general nursing and then you Forensic nursing kind of caught your attention. Why, why, what was it about forensic nursing for you personally? Um, you well, this patient population I feel is very underserved. Um, the sexual assault patient, I find people typically don't want to 
get involved. Um, it's been my experience. And so because of that, I feel, um, I feel moved and called to be um, a servant of these patients. And I, I think they're the bravest, strongest people that I have ever, I ever have the honor of meeting. And you talk about, when we talk about those rape kits, that has been a huge issue. And so hearing that um, there are being steps being taken mm -hmm. to resolve that issue, yes. and that that is one of your passions, I think yes. that's very yes. admirable. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's You're nice welcome. to talk to you. Thank you. It was really nice meeting you. Without these sexual assault nurse examiners, victims of violence receive inequitable care, specifically when it comes to collecting, documenting, and preserving forensic evidence. In Anchorage, the Alaska Comprehensive Forensic Training Academy is promoting general forensic health care training for all health care personnel, from emergency services through physicians. Let's see how. The Alaska Comprehensive Forensic Training Academy is a two-part uh, opportunity for all healthcare professionals, whether you're EMS or health aide or nurse, doctor, NP or PA, to obtain kind of a generalized forensic training to be able to respond to all of their patients, regardless of age, gender, socioeconomic status, or location. We are doing a disservice to all of our patients when we provide a high level of care for sexual assault victims, but we aren't providing forensic, evidence-based, trauma-informed care. Our mission statement is to train healthcare providers to be able to respond to all victims of violence so that we are providing patients with an equitable level of care regardless of who they are. Go online, search for Alaska Comprehensive Training Academy, and the registration is right there. The big question we're all asking this week is, does forensic science play a role in ensuring justice for all? Vinny Desidero from the National Institute of Standards and Technology is here to explain how standards implementation is a part of the answer. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for this opportunity. So first, you're here this week opening up the annual uh, meeting plenary session. Can you give us a little bit of a preview of what's in store? Sure, absolutely. Um, we have a great session planned. I'd like to thank President Williams for the opportunity and entrusting myself and co-chair Dino DeCrease with assembling that session. We have four very dynamic speakers that are going to uh, address the topic of justice for all from this forensic science perspective. Uh, that's Tiffany Roy, we have Sarah Chu, um, Adele Quigley McBride and John Butler. Uh, it's going to be a very thought-provoking uh, session, so I hope everybody comes. I think it's something that everybody's going to be talking about for the rest of the week. Sounds like it's going to be action-packed. I think so. <laughs> so the issue of standards conformity continues to be a hot topic in this field. Where do we stand on implementing consistent standards? As, as everybody here knows, there's a lot of effort going forth um, to assemble the standards and develop the standards, but right now implementation is something that's kind of out in the air. Uh, implementation, kind of like accreditation and certification, is, it's a voluntary process. So nobody's really required to do it. So it's something that laboratories and agencies and practitioners have to make a decision, a conscious decision, to actually take those standards and put them into practice. Um, we're, we at NIST are trying to uh, capture some of the information to see how much implementation is actually going on. And it seems like a lot of labs are implementing the standards, but they're not necessarily declaring that implementation. So we want to try to capture more of that data and encourage laboratories to declare implementation so we can use that information to help feed the process, to improve the standards, um, find gaps where standards need to be created, and just make a much stronger um, national system of standards. What measures are being taken to ensure that the forensic sciences field has results that you can reproduce and trust? Well, that's pretty much the, the whole nature of standards, right? You know, if you think about the United States and how many, it's 50 states, and each state has villages and cities. If everybody had their own driving rules, it would be kind of a mess. Nobody would know what's going right on. <laughs> exactly. Um, standards and forensic practice actually would help kind of set up a system like we have with our road systems so that everybody's on the same page, everybody's training in a similar manner, uh, and everybody's operating in the same fashion as well. And then on the other end of that, the way information is reported and passed off to triers of fact, and people who are going to interpret that information uh, in courtroom situations, they know how to approach it, where things are going, and how it was done. 
So it kind of streamlines the process. It's consistency, yes. What further work needs to be done to bring forensic science closer to meeting these goals? Uh, really, the, the big question is the implementation question that you asked earlier. Um, <clears throat> The standards are there, they're being created, there's hundreds of volunteers that are putting forth excessive amounts of time to build these standards, create them, uh, making sure that people are using them and that they're all consistent and harmonized is a big challenge, but also making sure that laboratories are implementing them. That, that's probably the biggest challenge with respect to standardization right now. The standards are there, we just have to make sure that people are using them um, in the best way possible, and then we're improving them based on the information as they're battle tested in that environment. Vinny, I know you've got a busy week ahead of you, so thank you for giving us a little bit of your time, and it's great to talk to you today. Thank you. Before we wrap up today, we're talking with attendees about where they see the future of forensic science heading. I think it's heading towards more multidisciplinary um, interactions between different practitioners, academics, and a variety of researchers and even across different disciplines as well. So in other words, many of the areas where traditionally you might have had people specialize in some areas more, some people may be involved in more, um, if you will, like a broader context of forensic science. In some ways, maybe that's going back to how some things were many, many years ago, perhaps. I think there's a lot of ways it's headed. I mean, one thing that we've been discussing is AI and I um, teach and we discuss that from an educational perspective but here at this meeting we've also started discussing it from forensic science perspective so that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. For me the future of uh, forensic science is, uh, is a multidisciplinary approach and uh, sharing of innovations and sciences and uh, I hope that for me the future of forensic sciences is in Italy. Definitely the future of forensic science I think is based a lot more in statistics. We want to ensure that we're developing appropriate uh, you know, basis for our conclusions, making sure that uh, all of our work, all of our evidence, all of our science is really sound and strong. That way when it gets to court, you know, we can be very confident in the opinions that we're giving and the testimony that we're giving. I think uh, the future is definitely in the technology that is now being accessed. I think AI is a huge one coming into play, as well as cybersecurity is going to be ever increasing. And I also think that DNA evidence, the new um, advances in that technology, with cases like the Innocence Project and organizations like that, I think that'll only grow in popularity and I think that's where the field is headed. That's a wrap on day two. From forensic nursing to international outreach, we've covered a lot together today. If you'd like to go back and watch any portion of today's episode, there are plenty of ways to do so. You can find the latest AAFS TV episodes on the TV's place throughout the convention center, on the in-house channels at partner hotels, on the AAFS meeting homepage and the meeting app. and on our YouTube and X pages. Thanks for tuning in to AAFS TV. We're hardly halfway through this exciting week. We'll meet you right back here tomorrow.